The F-22 Raptor is the most feared fighter jet on the planet. It's never lost a dogfight, it's never been shot down. In exercises, it routinely destroys entire squadrons before they even know it's there. But the Air Force is getting rid of it. They're replacing it with something that costs double, maybe triple the price. The F-47, a jet so advanced, the Air Force has been secretly flying it since 2020, and you've never seen a real picture of it. Why replace the undefeated champion? Because dominance in 2025 isn't about winning dogfights, it's about surviving what's coming next. The F-22 was supposed to be forever. When it entered service in 2005, it was untouchable. Faster than Mach 2, invisible to radar, able to cruise at supersonic speeds without afterburners. 20 years later, it's being put out to pasture, not because it's bad, but because the battlefield changed. China's building 120 J-20 stealth fighters every year. Russia's developing hypersonic missiles. Both countries have sixth-generation fighters in testing. The F-22 was designed in the 1980s, with computers running code from the 1990s. Its combat radius is 590 nautical miles, barely enough to reach targets in the Pacific without refueling. And those tankers? They're sitting ducks for long-range missiles. So, the Air Force made a choice. Build a new fighter from scratch. One that can fly over a thousand miles without refueling. One that commands drones like a quarterback. One designed for tomorrow's wars. That's the F-47, and it's already being built. If you think smart design beats outdated tech, type yes in the comments. Let's be clear, the F-22 is still a monster. In red flag exercises, a single Raptor took on 13 enemy jets and shot down eight before running out of missiles. It didn't lose, it just ran out of ammo. That's the problem. The F-22 can only carry six long-range missiles internally. In a real fight against China, that's not enough. You're facing hundreds of jets. Even if every missile hits, you're done after six kills. Then what? Range is another killer. The F-22's combat radius is around 590 miles. From Guam to Taiwan is over 1,800 miles. That means F-22s need multiple mid-air refuelings just to reach the fight. And those tankers fly slow, straight lines, perfect targets for China's long-range missiles. If the tankers go down, the F-22s can't get home. Then there's the tech. The F-22's avionics are ancient by today's standards. It was designed before smartphones existed. Its computer code is written in an outdated language called ADA. Every time engineers want to add a new sensor or weapon, they have to rewrite chunks of that code. It's expensive, slow, and locks the F-22 into the past. Maintenance is brutal too. The f 22 stealth coating is incredibly delicate. After every mission, maintainers spend hours reapplying special tape and caulk by hand. Before we go further, if this breakdown is keeping you engaged, hit that like button and subscribe. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing. It's free and helps us bring you more content like this. So why does the F-47 cost so much? Because it's not just a jet, it's an entire combat system. First, range. The F-47 has a combat radius over a thousand nautical miles. That's almost double the F-22. It can launch from Guam, hit targets deep inside contested airspace, and come home without refueling. You're not exposing tankers, you're not burning fuel on the way there. Second, stealth. The F-47 is practically invisible. We're talking about next-generation broadband stealth, low observable across multiple radar frequencies, reduced infrared signature, and coatings that don't need constant hand repair. The Air Force calls it spectral dominance. Third, the quarterback role. The F-47 commands drones called collaborative combat aircraft. Each F-47 can control multiple drones that fly ahead, scout threats, draw fire, and even engage targets. If a drone gets shot down, it's replaceable. This is force multiplication. One pilot, six or seven aircraft. Fourth, adaptability. The F-47 uses open mission architecture, modular design that lets engineers plug in new sensors, weapons, and software without redesigning the whole jet. When China rolls out a new radar, the F-47 gets an update. It evolves. And here's the kicker. Boeing says the first jet is already being built. It'll fly in 2028. 
the Air Force plans to buy at least 185. So what actually makes this sixth generation? It's not just speed or stealth, it's how all the systems work together. The F-47 flies above Mach 2, but it can supercruise more efficiently thanks to adaptive cycle engines. These engines shift between high thrust mode for combat and high efficiency mode for cruising, better fuel economy, longer range, and less heat signature. Less heat means enemy infrared missiles have a harder time locking on. The sensors are next level. The jet has 360-degree awareness using distributed aperture systems, cameras and sensors placed all around the aircraft that feed into one display. The pilot sees everything, and the AI on board processes it instantly, highlighting what matters and filtering out the noise. Electronic warfare is baked in. The F-47 can jam enemy radars, spoof missiles, and hack into enemy networks, all while staying invisible. It creates denial bubbles, zones where enemy systems simply stop working. And then there's the weapons, internal bays for hypersonic missiles, smart bombs, air-to-air -air missiles with ranges over 100 miles. Even directed energy weapons are being explored. The F-47 isn't just carrying yesterday's weapons, it's built for munitions that don't even exist yet. Most importantly, it's built to last. The F-22 will be 25 years old by 2030. At that point, keeping it flying is a losing battle. Parts are expensive. The tooling to build new ones doesn't even exist anymore. Let's talk about why this matters right now. China isn't waiting. In December 2024, they revered prototypes of their own sixth-generation fighter. They've got over 300 J-20s operational. Their military budget grows every year. The Air Force ran a war game last year. The scenario was a Chinese invasion of Taiwan in the mid-2030s. They couldn't use F-22s for the deep strikes needed to win. The range wasn't there. The weapons load wasn't there. That's when the decision crystallized. NGAD wasn't optional. It was mission critical. Without the F-47, America risks losing air dominance for the first time since World War II. China's 6th gen prototypes are real. Their J-20s outnumber our F-22s 2 to 1 already. By 2030, they could have 800 of them. And it's not just about numbers, it's about capability. The F-47 can operate in environments where the F-22 can't. It can coordinate with the Navy, Army, and Space Force in real time. It can lead swarms of drones that overwhelm enemy defenses. Our pilots deserve the best. They're the best trained in the world, but you can't ask them to find a 2030s war in a jet designed for the 1990s. So here's the reality. The F-22 is one of the greatest fighters ever built. It's just not built for what's coming. The F-47 is expensive, no question. But so was the F-22 when it was new. So was the B-2. So was every cutting-edge platform that kept America ahead. The real cost isn't the $300 million per jet. It's what happens if we don't build it. China closes the gap. Russia gets bolder. Our allies lose confidence. And the next time a crisis erupts in the Pacific, we're fighting with one hand tied behind our back. The F-47 isn't just a replacement. It's a statement. America isn't giving up air dominance. We're redefining it. And when that first jet takes flight in 2028, the world's going to know we're still the ones to beat. If you found this deep dive valuable, smash that like button and subscribe. We break down military tech and strategy every week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.